everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to the uh, seventh legislative day. I'm going to review a little bit of what's going on in, in, in front of us, but um, I'm only going to be here for the first part of this, and then I'm going to leave. Senator Costello is front and center. She was front and center last week holding hearings that um, I think were pretty important. We heard criticism that I think was valid over the summer. <coughs> Perhaps the discussion about the economy at large uh, wasn't dealt with enough last year. And I thought about that, and so did Senator Costello, and we kind of came up with the conclusion that that's probably true. Uh, when you're talking about the kinds of actions we're going to have to take and have already taken, uh, you better be looking at the whole picture, and that's what Senator Costello has been doing. Uh, we're going to probably continue to focus on the budget and reform the largest cost drivers. Uh, stand by on bills for those. Uh, we'll be, del be delivering a responsible budget, and it, we're probably going to be biased towards cuts, as I've said in the past, uh, but some use of the uh, earnings reserve is something we are going to be evaluating over <coughs> most of the session. And if we do use it, it will only be after, thank you, it will only be after we have passed a spending limit and are satisfied with some pretty serious uh, budget cuts. Uh, as I said, last week was a productive week. Senate Finance held hearings with the administration and legislative people on the budget in general, and those will continue this week. Senate Labor and Commerce, obviously centered by, uh, chaired by Senator Costello, had hearings with a, a, an entire panel of, an, of economists, and it went over the, over the many days and uh, many hours of, of the week, and I think we got some great information out of that. Uh, I think the information that's coming out of Senator Costello's committee is going to certainly inform our actions as we go forward. Um, I'm going to turn this over to S Senator Costello, and then I'm going to leave. But I do, did want to give you all a heads up on what's coming this week. Uh, Senator Geisel's Resource Committee will hear from uh, AGD AGDC on the LNG uh, project status. I think that's this afternoon. Uh, Senator Cog Hills Judiciary Committee will be hearing uh, some updates on SB 91, <coughs> and uh, my office is still waiting for uh, the uh, some of the reports that are coming from the Medicaid reform that we did last year. So, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Senator Costello. And keep in mind as we go forward, and Senator Costello has, uh, I think, proven that she's on board with, with the uh, uh, majority's direction, which is to look at the economy overall. Um, take the private sector's point of view uh, very seriously uh, and realize that we're not here to wreck, nor are we here to save government, but to make government make sense for the people of Alaska. And we'll do that over the uh, uh, course of the next few months. And Senator Costello, please. Thank you. Thank you for doing this for us. Senator Kelly, uh, appreciate the focus on the Senate Labor and Commerce Committee. Um, as many of you know, we started off the session with a focus on the economy. And Alaska is in a recession. That's different from last session. We're, we're moving into new territory here where uh, since 1988, Alaska has seen the economy grow every single year until, this, um, until recently. So uh, you usually don't get economists to agree on, on all issues, but they all have agreed that Alaska is in a recession. And so as chair of labor and the Labor and Commerce Committee, uh, which is the Committee on the Economy, I took the opportunity at the beginning of session uh, to focus on, on that. And I think that as we uh, look at what we do in the legislature, that it's really important that we ask that question based on every action that we're considering taking is how will that action affect the economy? 
And Alaskans are concerned. Alaskans are worried about their jobs. They're worried about the economy. They don't necessarily wake up every morning and worry about state government budget. They worry about are they going to have their job at the end of the month? Are there, is their family going to be in their home? Will they have to sell their home? Will, the, will their children uh, stay in the same school or will they have to move because of this? And also those uh, families whose kids are about to graduate, they're worried about the opportunities for their children. You know, will they be able to come back after graduation and get a job in Alaska? Will they be able to enter that job market? And so we're seeing uh, tremendous job losses. We've, as you know, cut the budget. We've gone from eight billion to seven to six to five. We're now at 4.2 unrestricted general fund. <laughs> And we know that when you cut the budget, uh, you know, you, you do see job losses. And we know that the uh, private sector has certainly been hit very hard, first with the oil and gas uh, uh, industry. Um, the construction industry is seeing tremendous hits to their, to their jobs. And now the uh, economists are telling us that, these, uh, that other sectors of the economy will start seeing job losses. So this past week, we had six hours of uh, Labor and Commerce Committee uh, hearings. We had um, a panel with an ICER, uh, representatives from ICER, Northern Economics, Alaska Housing Finance Corporation, Northrim Bank, and then also we had uh, the uh, lead researcher at the Department of Labor come and share with us and also uh, go back and forth between them, which is something, you know, that's not common in the legislature. We usually have one person testify. And so that was uh, pretty important to hear that. I think that one of the things that we heard loud and clear is that the legislature has a role in providing certainty for the economy. Um, we had a comparison to what, what we experienced in the 80s, which was right after I graduated from high school from West. And we heard the differences, and one of the differences is that the legislature can provide some certainty. I think this session you will see us act. I think that my colleagues in the Senate, my friends in the House, we're committed to acting, taking action, and we will be looking at how any of the action that we take affects the economy. Then moving forward next, this coming week in Labor and Commerce, we're going to be looking at three areas of the economy um, that have actually been growing and doing well. We're going to hear from those sectors. We're going to hear about are they concerned moving forward, what has been working for them. Um, so we'll be hearing from the tourism industry, uh, the Alaska Travel Industry Association President Sarah Leonard is coming on Tuesday. And then we're going to hear from um, the um, air cargo industry and the Department of Transportation. They'll be here also on Tuesday, tomorrow. And then we're going to hear from Lori Winghire, who's the Division of Insurance Director about Alaska's health care, um, looking forward in the health care market. And then on Thursday, we're going to move into a question of whether or not Alaska needs an economic, a long-term economic uh, uh, plan. So we've never had a statewide economic plan. We do have regional economic plans. So we'll be hearing from Bill Pop, who's the president of um, Anchorage Economic Development Corporation. We're going to hear from Jim Dodson with the Fairbanks Economic Development Corporation, and then uh, Shelley Wright with Southeast Conference. So. Um, we'll also be hearing from the Commissioner of Commerce, Community, and Economic Development. So I really would rather open this up for questions, and, uh, but I do encourage you all to attend uh, the Labor and Commerce Committee hearings. Um, we're the first committee in Alaska to have a Facebook page, and we've also fielded questions that people have asked on Facebook in committee. So what we're trying to do is to reach out to Alaskans, have valuable hearings on the economy, and really shift the discussion from, you know, what specific things are we doing, and and what are you know what are we what are we doing with the budget to how do our uh, discussions affect the economy? How does this particular uh, option affect the the job losses and the economy in Alaska? Because that's what we're we're grappling with, and that's really, you know, what Alaskans are are caring about right now. So, with that, I'd like to answer questions. Hi, good morning, Liz Rains with KTVA. Um, you mentioned the focus on the economy and, and um, a commitment to take action this year. Um, and it, it seems like, you know, inevitably, no matter which action you take, it will impact the economy. So how do you measure as you're moving forward, looking at different cuts to make, um, where those will land based on what you're hearing in these hearings? 
Thank you. And we did ask that of the panelists. Um, I specifically asked the question of the options that we have, which one does the least damage to the economy and actually also addresses the issue most significantly. And um, in short, it is a bill that would be similar to Senate Bill 128 from last year, which uh, managing the permanent fund and in, in a manner that uh, looks to uh, keeping the corpus healthy, uh, a spending cap in, a, you know, in addition to that, and also using some of that to pay for government because that, that was the purpose of the creation of the permanent fund. And we are in that time where we have to look to that. And so I, I, I'm pretty confident that you will see coming out of the Senate a bill uh, that addresses that in that manner. And then of the options left, um, we will be looking at um, economic modeling and trying to figure out uh, of the options that we have, how can we move forward in a way that makes, you know, makes the most sense for the economy. So, yes, Becky. Oh, sorry. Uh, Becky Bohr with the Associated Press. Uh, one thing also that came up in those hearings was looking at kind of the impacts that an income tax versus a PFD cut would have. Mm -hmm. There is legislation um, currently in the Senate that would uh, restore the portion of the dividend that was cut last year. Um, is that something that that you think um, that you're open to, um, given the need that you see to restructure the dividend? Do you think that we need to restore um, what was cut last year? Uh, Becky, I have said repeatedly, and, and I think many of my colleagues have said, that we need to be open to everything. And so certainly if, if a colleague introduces legislation, it's my job to look at it and consider it. I haven't made a decision about that, if, as you heard. Um, it's A lot of that is a process question. Um, but I think the broader question is, how does anything affect the economy? What will that do to the economy? In the long term, will it, will it provide the certainty that um, the private sector and the public sector is asking for. I mean, that, that's the one thing that we've heard is certainty is what's important here. Uh, no one's going to be happy with what we do in the end, but I do think that uh, acting and in, in making really great strides towards ad addressing these issues is something that um, you'll see happen this session. Yes. Uh, good morning, Nat Hurst with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, Last week, after the uh, news conference, like Senate leadership didn't uh, what didn't seem willing to take any questions and um, weren't available during the week, and they're not here now. Do you know if Senate leadership is uh, plans to take questions from reporters during the session? Um, as far as like what the Senate majority's plans are for dealing with us. <clears throat> Thank you, Nat. Well, I'm a senator, and I'm here, and I'm answering your questions. So I think that's evidence that we are open to answering your questions. Um, as far as the plan, I think the, I think our commitment is, you know, as elected representatives of the people, and we are the people's branch, is to get our message out there to the public as, you know, as effectively as possible. And I would say using the media, and you've seen my committee personally uh, have a Facebook page. We've you know, we're answering questions, asking questions that the public has asked. So, I think uh, I think it's very important that we answer questions. And and so, um, I I can tell you that if you have questions of me, I'm here to answer them. <laughs> do you think that extend, I mean, do you think that should extend to the leadership? Do you think the leadership should be available to answer our questions during the week? Of, of course, I do. I mean, I, I think that it's important to answer your questions. So, yeah. Um, Steve Quinn of Bloomberg. Um, <clears throat> In your discussions last week, did you hear anything about how 